Hey, what's up Linda users, I'm Jonathan, and today's video is again about terrain creation. This time we'll use a new free tool for terrain creation called Terrace Sculptor and texture the terrain completely in Blender. This way we won't have to make use of paid assets nor software. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. You can see right here that we are using micro displacement in our material. So let's launch Terra Sculptor to create our height map and different maps for texturing our landscape. Now that Terra Sculptor has launched, we can select new project and I personally like to work in a 1K resolution. This way everything is quick and our different erosion actions will perform better. Now you can see that we have our home grid right here. We can disable this one under objects and home grid. I would suggest you to leave everything as is because we'll mess around with our world and shading in Blender. Up here we have different methods of creating our base terrain. We can either generate it using constants or noise. And I really enjoy the gradient noise. Gradient might suggest something different, but it actually creates awesome terrain. We have a few presets right here. And for the terrain we'll be creating in this tutorial, I will select rough mountains. This gives us a really great base. Now we can mess around with these sliders right here. For example, adjust the size or the amplitude with gain. Just be aware that if you move gain too high, you'll get plateaus like these ones. So keep it reasonable. The rest of the details will be created with erosion, so I'll leave it here and click OK. Now we have our base terrain. If the mouse speed is too slow for you, you can adjust it right here. I for example like to use 4 times the base speed. Erosion can be found under the erosion tab. And let's start with the rain erosion. At a scale of 1k, it is best to use this one half button on the rain amount and just click OK. This gives us a good place to start with erosion. But I'll undo this operation because I actually want to save this erosion as a map. So let's go ahead and again click on rain and right here select save the masks to disk. And now we can choose a folder. Let's again select one half and press on OK. And you can see right here that the maps have been saved. And we can use these ones to texture our terrain later in Blender. Under Transform and Modify, we can find lots of filters for our terrain. A nice one to use is Terrace. And we can again select one of these presets, and the small viewport right here will update accordingly. So let's click on OK, and this is our resulting terrain. Now, we could go in and also hydraulically erode our terrain, but for now I call this good, and quickly scale it up to 4K. So let's go to Modify, Resample, and select 4K. Click on OK. You can see that the terrain has been flatted out. This doesn't really matter because we can adjust the height in Blender with the Displace node. OK, now we can go ahead and go to File, Export Terrain, give it a name, and I suggest you to use TIFF as a file format. OK, our height map has been generated and we also have a few masks for texturing. There's one thing that we're still missing, and this is a slope mask, but we can easily generate it under height map, slope, and adjust the fall off. Now everything that's black is steep. And to export this slope map, you'll have to go to file name right here, select the folder, give it a name, and just click on save. You can now choose to save this terrain or not. For this tutorial, I will not save this terrain, but directly go into Blender. In Blender, we'll start off by deleting everything and adding in a plane. I will scale it up by 100, just so we are more in the real world scale. I will also choose experimental, because again, I want to render this terrain with a micro displacement and not with the displacement modifier. So I'll also add in a subdivision surface modifier set to adaptive, and now everything will continue in the shader. So let's give it a new material, move this principal BSTF up, and add an A displacement node. We can connect the displacement to the displacement input of our material output node and with node wrangler enabled press Ctrl and T to add in an image node with according UV coordinates. Click on open, locate your height map and open it. I'll also set it to none color and now we can preview it. Up here under viewport shading I'll disable scene world 
just so we have a basic HDRI that we don't have to load in. In the material settings, I'll select either displacement only or displacement and bump. And for this terrain, I'll be going with displacement and bump. Now you can see that the scale is way too high, so I'll set it to maybe 0.5. And now comes the texturing part. With the folder open, you can just drag and drop these masks into the shader editor for later use. Let's go ahead and select the principal PSDF and, still with Node Wrangler enabled, press Ctrl, Shift and T and locate a good material for your, for your terrain. I like to use ones from CC0 textures. This gravel material is looking pretty good, so I'll just select everything except the displacement and hit principal texture setup. Now our texture has been set up, but you can see that we are missing the ambient occlusion map, so with, so with Ctrl, Shift and D, duplicate this node and open the gravel underscore AO map and using a mix RGB node we can multiply both of these maps together. And right now I have the adaptive subdivision disabled just so Blender doesn't have to compute it every time. But you can see right now that ambient occlusion is working and we can finally start with the main part of the texture. I won't show you the full process but just how to do it in general. I will link a tutorial by Blender Guru on the top right corner right now where you can download these three node groups. They just help with creating image-based terrains. So just select them and append. Now we can delete this mapping node and add in the Uber mapping node. And with the UV coordinates as an input, we can easily adjust the scale of the terrain and using the mosaic rotation and noise, the tiling of the texture won't be noticeable anymore. To add different textures with our masks, we can just select all of this and shift Control duplicate these nodes and go ahead and load in different image textures. I for example want, want to use the slope map next, so I'll just load in some rocks like these ones. And we can quickly preview them and this is looking good. If you don't want your rocks to be rotated like this, you can of course just use a regular mapping node and scale them down. This way the tiling will be much more noticeable. But of course for rocks it might be better to have it this way than, than this. So I'll be using the mapping node for the rocks and the slope map, which is this one, for the combination of both of these materials. I'll suggest you to mix the color outputs together and not the finished principal BSDF setup because having multiple BSDF shaders in your material will slow down your project immensely. So let's disconnect all of them and add in the PBR mixer node group also by the Blender Guru. We can just plug all of these outputs into the corresponding inputs, do the same for the second material. And now with this factor slider, we can adjust which material is shown. And as you might have guessed already, we can use the slope map as our factor. Now the rocks, now the rocks are way too big, so let's scale them down even more. And we can also adjust the slope map with a color ramp. And just like this, we have a base texture for our terrain. You can of course now layer different materials on top of each other using the different masks we created, but this will break the scope of this tutorial. So I'll just now plug all of these outputs into the principal PSDF shader and use a separate RGB node to get the red channel of our base color, plug this into the specular input. This is just an artistic choice because I found this to look pretty good. And now this is our terrain. I will quickly show you what I did in the final scene to composite this. So let's add in a camera, for example right here, with Control b just isolate it like this. And right now might be a good time to again enable the scene world, so we can worry about our environment. Now that Blender 2.9 is the new stable release, we can use the new sky texture as our HDRI. Of course the sun is way too intense, so let's turn it down and let's also change the rotation to a point that we feel it looks good. For terrain like this, I always like to use the mist pass to composite in some fog. So let's enable mist and with the camera selected, let's also show the mist limits. We can now adjust these in our world settings with both of these sliders. Make sure the whole terrain is included, just like this. And now in rendered mode, we can right here choose the mist pass and have a look at it and it looks fine. So let's go ahead and with F12 render our scene. 
Of course, with our really basic texture setup, the textures aren't looking that great, but right now this is not the focus. So let's quickly preview our image in the compositor. And to mix it together with our missed node, let's use an alpha over node. We can now just plug the image into the first image input and the mist map into the factor. And now we have basic fog. I always like to also plug the mist pass into the second image input because I found this to look better. And with, for example, a color ramp, we can adjust the color of our mist to maybe a little bit blue, just like this. And this is our final terrain scene. You can, of course, choose to color grade it in any way you want. And, of course, add more textures to make it look a lot better. But that's it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see us in the next video next Saturday.